Join me after the break. Welcome back to the World Series of Backgammon. We're here in Cannes at the 2007 Riviera Cup qualifying rounds. As a backgammon virgin, I'm here to learn, and you're coming with me, into the intense world of pro backgammon. What's the longest you've ever played backgammon in a row? That must have been about 40 hours. I don't know, I didn't count, <laughs> but probably, uh, I don't know, I could be mad sometime, 10 hours. Wow. Say. Like 56 hours or something? Yeah. That's the top so far. Really? Yes. <laughs> Well, John, I see this is an intense game. I was just chatting with some of the players and they were telling me how they've played for 24, 48, or even more hours in one session. Oh, absolutely. In fact, a game can go on a long time, mm -hmm. which is why in the World Series of Backgammon, we've chosen to increase the pressure by imposing a clock uh, on every match. Uh, this brings its own pressures to the game. And in fact, in one of last year's tournaments, we saw Maria Krancheva from Bulgaria get into terrible time trouble against Morton Home from Denmark. I think she was glancing at her clock there for a minute, Will. Well, she's definitely, um, she definitely has at least a couple of minutes less than Morton, if not more. Another interesting thing, John, is that home playing on too good does play havoc with Maria's time over there. She's lost another 40 seconds I since we last mentioned it. Yes, well spotted, Will. That's the reason. That's why he's doing this. Um, he doesn't mind burning up a little bit of his time as, as long as he can get uh, Maria to burn up some of hers. Mm. You know, I, I find the clock adds a dimension to backgammon that I really enjoy. Um, it Sometimes you have to manage the clock, so you, you can't give it all, all of the thoughts, that you, all of the thinking process that you'd like to. But it, I think it's a wonderful element, and I'd like to see more, more of the clock in more tournaments. And Morton Home progresses to the last 16 in this, the World Series of Backgammon Riviera Cup. Were there any other highlights from last year's event? Oh yes, you bet. Um, the final between Nodar Gagua of Georgia and Sean Casey from Ireland was the most amazing match I have ever seen. So the final game in this final match in this uh, great international tournament um, sees Nodar Gagua with a healthy lead in this game. What do those numbers on the left-hand side of the screen mean? Okay, there are two numbers there. There's the pip count and the percentage. These are computer-generated numbers. The pip count uh, is a standard count of all the pips uh, either side of the board. Uh, the percentage is that player's chance of winning the game at that particular moment. You'll see it change as the game progresses. He's an ace! <laughs> nice! And he's got full control of the outfield. That must make him a tremendous favorite. Listen to that crowd, John. Everybody's going crazy. The oh. percentages on the screen are going to reverse now. Jaguar are in terrible trouble here. Oh, oh double but, uh, fours? Double four. Oh, Gives this... him a breath of hope. He's already kept this match alive once with a two last one. 2-1 and he misses a check. 2-1 for Sean sure. Casey. It's oh the worst God. possible number. It's the only number that's going to cost him an extra roll. And Gagua suddenly smells the possibility. He needs a set here. 5-4, OK. 5-4. And I think Gagua is down to five checkers. And Sean Casey's down to three checkers. And Gagua He's got two rolls for a set here. A, he needs a double. Two rolls for a set. OK. 6-3. Six, three. Six, three. he'll take the two checkers off. It was deceptive, but there were still three left. Yeah. And that is critical because Sean, okay. and Sean Casey doesn't roll the double and the whole championship depends on a last roll situation with Nodar Gagua needing any one of six doubles to win the championship. And he's done it do once it. in this match and he didn't manage to do it this time. Oh. He was desperately unlucky. And Sean Casey is the Riviera Cup champion.
I'm soaking up the atmosphere here in Cannes as many of the world's top players compete for the big money and kudos of winning a major event. For me, I've picked up a few tips to improve my checker plane and cube action. What's a pigeon? Um, him, him, her, him. That whole table. <laughs> Fair enough. Yes. It's basically a player that they, they think they're better than they actually are. Um, so they look for various money action in tournaments, but uh, in essence they're not as good as they think uh, and therefore a stronger player uh, can uh, use their skill to outplay them um, pretty much no matter what the dice actually deliver. What's a beaver? Uh, it is when somebody gives you an inappropriate double and you get to whip it to four or eight depending on the uh, cube action, but it's uh, very fun to do. You cannot do it in tournament play, but you can do it in money play.